Let's say you meet with a cubing friend and you want to do a collaborative cubing activity with them. Maybe you want to do team blind, or a factory solve, or a team solve. But perhaps the most exciting option is doing a relay. So you have a set of cubes in front of you. The question now becomes, who's going to do what? I mean, you're faster at 5x5 than your friend and faster at 4x4 and 6x6, but if you do all those cubes, your friend will have nothing to do and will just not be solving for a good 20 seconds. So I guess that means that they have to do 4x4, but now they're going to be solving for 10 seconds more than you. Uh, maybe you can do clock or pyro or something, but you suck at both those events. It seems impossible to find the perfect way to distribute each person's events. Well, that's the problem creative builders tried to solve. He created a really cool program in Scratch from Scratch that found the optimal way to arrange a two-man mini Guildford relay so that they would be able to solve it as fast as possible. I remade this code using Python, made it a bit more versatile and user-friendly, and added WCA functionality, where all you have to do is plug in your WCA ID. The code is not the best, but it works well enough, and in my defense, I am a pre-medicine major, so. All you have to do is click the link below in the description. This will open up a Google Drive file that will run the code. Then you can click File and Save a Copy in Drive. After that, you will be able to run the code by yourself. You can run the code just by clicking this play icon. The first question will ask you if you want to input WCIDs or input times manually. Then it will ask you how many solvers are doing the relay. Then it will ask you whether you want to do a custom relay or a template relay. If you want to do a template relay, you can do mini Guildford, micro Guildford, Guildford, side events, and 2 through 4 to 2 through 7. But if you want to do something else, you can type custom, which will let you type in your choice of events. You can repeat events if you want, but they must strictly be from this list, especially if you're doing the WCID option. Finally, it will prompt you for either the WCIDs or the times of the solvers. If it prompts you for the times, make sure to follow the exact order of the events you see above. If you repeated an event, repeat the solver's average for it. And finally, if your solver doesn't know how to solve a puzzle, type in INF. This stands for infinity, because it takes infinity seconds for the solver to solve the puzzle. After that, it will load for a split second and then show the optimal setup for the relay that you will do, as well as the estimated time that you will solve all the cubes in. Pretty cool, right? Now, if you're looking at this and thinking, I can probably make something better than that, then you're probably right. I'm not technically skilled enough to make something much better than this. But you guys probably are. Send me a message if you think you made something that's better than my code, and 100% I'll shout you out. I hope I didn't make you cringe too much. Alright, thanks for watching. If you want a full breakdown of the code, comment below and smash that like button. Thank you to Speedcube Shop CEO Cameron Brown for inventing Python, and I'll see you guys in the next one.